On tonight's program, Tsar will drift a card. Gravity takes a break. World politics. No, shut up, you dickhead! Now fuck off! Don't send me another message. Fuck off! You little pig. And this happens. Well, hello, what a coincidence. So I just wanted to tell you. <coughs> hello and welcome to 47 Gear Alaskan Special. You might wonder, what is Alaska? Can you drink it? Well, no, you can't. You know, back in the old days, Alaska belonged to the country you might have heard of called Russia. Russia, but not the one with this maniac on the throne. Surprise, motherfucker! by the Tsar Alexander II. But Russians were not interested in living there. And lack of Russian bears and other commodities. And also the colony was basically broke. So this bad boy decided to sell it. And in 1867, he made a deal with them boys from the United States of America. Mate, I need some cash. Okay, would 7.2 million dollars cut it? For the whole Alaska. That is a fair price, right? Right? Yeah, be sure, mate. I would always give you the best deals. And sold it for 7.2 million USD. Which is an equivalent to about 140 million US American dollars nowadays. Well, you couldn't even buy a single cheapest variant of F-35 for this amount, Current GDP of Alaska is about 50 billion USD. So our boy truly mastered the art of selling low and well, not buying high, because he broke mate. What do you want? I wanna know why you just shouted at me down the microphone. What do I fucking shout at you down the microphone for? Playing your fucking mouth mate, I'm a grown man. You sent me a message first, yeah? I live in Smevic, Birmingham. If you want the fucking brawl, come down Smevic, ask for Danny G. I'll come out of my house and I'll break your fucking legs, you little prick. Oi, stop shouting, who do you think you are? Shut up, Ken! Shut up, Ken! Look your fucking dance box out your phone, son! Come on, Birmingham, and I'll fuck you up! Come on, Birmingham now, and I'll fuck you up! I've told you where I live! You want to know where I live? I live in fucking Smevic! Now come, and I'll kill you! You won't kill me. I'm not! I'm fucking not! Excuse me, you won't kill me, because I'm a gangster. Boom! Ooh. Bam! Ooh. Oh. Bop! Bada bop, boom! Pow! Oh! No! Shut up, you dickhead! Now fuck off! Don't send me another message! Fuck off! You little prick! Oh, you little bitchy man! Are you running fuck away because you're scared? <laughs> he also got wrecked by some Russians later on. If we fast forward to present, you will find that one truly does not get around these corners very easily and that you might need a good off-road vehicle. But well, no one told me that before I bought this Ford CLT 9000. It really is not the most off-road looking truck in the history of vehicular action and I really hope that the task we will get is not going to be very daunting and perhaps important. Because at the same time, how hard can it be? It even has its own caffeine machine. Beans, what the fuck? I also invited a friend to help me get over this in a more timely manner. His choice, slightly small boy's truck, compared to the big boy Fordo. You've got mail. What, who's texting me? You will deliver this big boy's trailer to the harbor, but beforehand you must pass a simple test of delivering goods on the cargo bed. You sir are one big thin ingenious father drucker. Nice cheese though. I then decide to upgrade my truck's performance by putting on some stickers. Oh no!
Well, shit, I guess I'm off to Atlantic Ocean. So that's one small sticker and one big sticker. That should add about 380 horsepower. Physics. And so we set off to the slightly less daunting task of carrying small boys cargo. Thanks for joining me, yeah no problem, so we have to fix this pipeline, and here we get the pipes, and here we are. How hard could it be? Good question. Let's set off into the sunset, even though there is not one. Better than bad, but worse than superb idea. Things go fairly smoothly and one could say that we are perhaps making good progress. Well, until I decide to cut a corner in the warehouse, the performance in the snow and more the lack of it does not add in any way, shape or form confidence to the offering capabilities of this truck. Okay well that was easy. Yep I even found myself new easy. Wait what the fuck. Officer I got one question for you. What are those? Anyways another task. Yes here we are and someone needs fuel. And they need it delivered to the port. We could take the tarmac road or we could go through the mud and blood. Mud? Mud? But worse than good but okay. If you do not stop pointing that laser at my eyes I will
not gonna lie this is the first gas station that you have to winch yourself into and hope that you will get out. Zero stars would not make for quick police chase after robbing this gas station. Well, you know, we thought we were building a bridge over the River Kwai, which is noble. Mm, we are. We're not. The name of that river. The Cock. 47 gear. Is building a bridge over the River Cock. Wait a minute! Who are you?
Amogos. So now it's time for the big boy soil rig trailer but first, give me the laser pointer, come on, give it, give it. Here is the trailer and here, we need to deliver it, and as you can see the road is littered with rocks bogs and crocs, and even mud and snow to ruin this show, so we might need to increase our budget. Could we get better equipment? Okay better equipment you say. I will see what I can do. What the fuck? These nuts. Ha! <laughs> Got <he. laughs> We modified our trucks for the mission appropriately with Ford equipped for towing and small bus truck equipped for repairing as the road would get rougher and rougher. First, it's smooth sailing on a tarmac and we quickly make our way through this part. Yes, the budget cuts not allowing for chain tires can cause a bit of sideways action, but nothing that 47 gear would look at as a problem. And then we go through the bog. Here it gets a little harder and I am forced to quickly slow down to a pace of a snail. Could be worse though. And then it gets worse, when I have to bridge the mud using this telegraph pole, because you cannot move a centimeter in this mud. After bridging the gap using assisted drift, which is basically a technique where you drift using winch. If someone asks, you heard it here first. Upon leaving the bog, the terrain gets a bit less hostile, but not enough to not make Mr. Ford struggle. Things go slowly but somewhat smoothly until this happens. As the small boy's Zix is lying on the floor, in less than ideal position, far from the one recommended by the Medical Institute of 47th Gear. Give me drugs. No. Problem. Yee <coughs> lunch break.
Anyways, I use my free brain cells and figure out a quick way to get Mr. Zix out of there by simply wedging Ford's fuel tank against this pole It works even though it shouldn't. Now back to running. In snow. Then I get delighted by the sight of a nice tarmac road, but after a while, the light falls apart upon seeing the trailer we are supposed to deliver. First, it's smooth sailing on the tarmac and we quickly make our way through this part. And then I managed to pull the most amazing maneuver of them all and I flipped the trailer on a straight road. A truly skill that is not only imp impossible to learn, but also impossible to forget. But then we cut our exhaust gas together and resetted the trailer by calling Jeff the pushback man. Jeff also likes soap. I'd begin. Want soap? Don't know how to get soap? Learn soap. Become soap man. Watch our tutorial on how to become soap man in the Ready 2.0 and maybe even real life. Coming story of a soap driver who is delivering soap to families in Finland, like I would name it initial S or EA Soapman. It's in the soap. Six left of a jump. Seventy. Three. At over. At over. Okay, here's what happened next. Delivered to you, like we know what we're doing. And with a slight nostalgic feeling.
folk trusted you. I thought I could too. So why in bloody hell does Makarov know you? We go again.
Once there was an oil rig trailer. Stranded in a warehouse waiting, no Jeff could find a way. How to get the rig home and safe. But one day some weird jets came around, assuring they would get to grind, with trucks weaker than a lavatory latch, they would desperately try this goal to fetch. So they arrived to the oil rig trailer, picked it up, and with a force grater, towed the thing through mud and blood that would kill a Polish stud. But dem boys got into trouble after trailer started to struggle then the trailer gave up like the French dem boys had to drag him thus creating a trench. Well after couple hours, using all of our powers the trailer would not get back up on its feet, that we certainly have not find very sweet. Some say the trailer physics have bugged. Others say that they could do it so they judged. Trust me when I say that the jets could not find a way. How to get the trailer back home and safe. But there was an long forgotten warrior. To call him for the mission from the courtier there was once a Kool-Aid trucker who could not get near though. Slightly oversized a beast. But a one that on mud could only feast. Some say he can speak with ducks. But we could not verify such facts. Giving up is an option for a not classy jet though. One of the jets was sadly made out of cheap though. And that not being me, because I'm too cool. Some even dare to say too cool for school. Yet after hours of continuous failure exhaustion brought us to knees for sure. So we called the legend to help us get through the hell. But you should know that his speed is not super well, that I can tell, because we waited all night long for him to come, yet no lights would lit the road up for some time it seemed too terrible, but then came the unexpectable. Yeah, we don't know how to access his main cortex. It's all alien. We couldn't figure it out. We have to uh, prepare for his careful extraction. We were given specific orders. Skip it up and down. Next big boys trailer got lost somewhere in the mountain river region which means that we have to go through tow regions to get to our boy. Here is where we enter the mountain river region and here is the trailer. How hard could it be? Well let's just say that it is not the best idea to be creating a plan after you go on the mission because you might find yourself perhaps mixing up some things like for example taking a slightly less efficient route or like us going in a completely wrong direction just to find ourselves a delivery point without the trailer. Truly our genius is difficult to capture. Time well spent. Anyways we continue our journey to the trailer.
Well, the game crashed, but we have managed to get it snow running again, and we entered our home region. Obviously, this is going to be just an easy tarmac action, without any trouble, right? Well... On our journey, we had a lot of struggle with the snow and mud that Alaska threw at us. Our first mission might have been a slight failure, but we have picked up the pace and conquered the daunting task of transporting the trailer to the damned port. I would dare to say that we have experienced snowrunner at its best, where you never know what's around the corner and you can and will get stuck. But it's not about avoiding dangerous muddy trails, but it is about digging yourself out when you get stuck, there and not recovering to the garage, no matter how hopeless the situation might be. Because our trucks could not conquer the wilderness with ease, it really adds the adrenaline when you're entering the swamps and muddy pits. But that's the art of snow running. Stop it. Get some help. Help is on the way. Help has arrived.
help has arrived. But the winner without a question or shadow of doubt is this chap. Yeah, back up. Careful, careful. Oh, a bit quick. No, oh, that's not gone well. <laughs> ah, I mean. I can't believe you've done this. Here we go again.